What up guys? A um, little bit different video today because, well, I've been thinking about it a little bit and I kind of started this channel like, I guess 11 months ago and I pretty much just started releasing content like me going to drift days, me building stuff, whatever. And I never really gave like a snapshot of like who I am as a person before YouTube and before like all of this and how I got into drifting, what I've been drifting, how long I've been drifting, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I cracked 1500 subscribers like today, which is insane. And I'm assuming I don't actually know 1500 people and 1500 people don't really know completely about me. So I posted up last night on Instagram. I was like, ah, oh, you know, if you've ever wanted to know anything, I'm going to do a Q and A video and you guys can learn about me as a person. Um, so I got a bunch of sweet questions. You guys really swamped me with all those. Um, and there's lots of stuff that I was like, oh yeah, that's super relevant to the channel and um, you guys. And then I've never really mentioned anything like that. So yeah, this is my first Q. Actually, no, this is my second Q&A video. Emily and I did one probably like three months ago. Uh, it's on her channel. Her link's in the description. So check that out. Um, it's pretty cute. It's like 30 minutes or 40 minutes long. But, you know, if you love us, it's totally worth watching. Uh, I'm not sure how long this video is going to end up being. But I'll try and make it as short as possible and also like as interesting as possible. So thank you for watching and I'm going to jump into some questions now. <laughs> Alright, so the first one is how fucking old are you? Uh, I am 26. I turned 26 a month ago. I was born in 14th of September 1992. Um, age I started drifting. Uh, I started drifting probably like seriously at the track when I was maybe... 18 or 19, um, I'd have to look it up. Uh, I do remember being at Queensland Matsuri, the first Queensland Matsuri in 2011. Um, so I'd say probably the start of that year. So I'd say, yeah, probably 2011. What got me into drifting? Um, this is actually, I think I was like 16 or 17. Uh, I don't think I had a license yet. And actually one of my friends from Lismore um, came over to another friend's house that I was staying at. And he rocked up in this red slant front K70, had a 5K and a four speed and a weldy and choppies. Um, and he literally got there. He's like, dude, I just got this car. Come hang out. So we literally drove to the Gold Coast and had like the funnest day I've ever had like in a vehicle. And from that day, I was like, I need one of these because this is the most fun you can have in a car. Um, so that's pretty much what started my love for Corollas is yeah a friend had one and I just jumped in and this is the coolest thing ever um, It wasn't the first time I'd been like exposed to cars like I've been into cars Probably as long as I can remember like I've probably got like Seven years worth of Street Commodore magazines at home. <laughs> oh actually mum probably threw them out, but I've got them somewhere <laughs> um, Yeah, so I, I've been a long time into it and then yeah that pretty much introduced me to to, to uh, introduce me to Toyotas, drifting, uh, and pretty much stuff like that. Uh, so pretty, and then after that, so my first car that I got that was like a drift orientated car is I bought a white flat front K70 uh, that had a 3TC conversion. Uh, so in Australia, the cars come with a 1.3 liter, uh, and then someone had swapped a 1.8 liter single overhead cam motor into the car. Uh, it had like heavy duty clutch, welded diff, extractors, uh, a Weber, and I think the compression had been bumped up a little bit. Um, it, yeah, it ripped. I never actually got to take it to the track. Um, I can't remember why, but I spent a bunch of money when you, you know, you're 17 and have a car um, on it, and I never actually got to do anything fun in it. First car that I had that I took to the track was a. I had a K70 with a black top 20 valve in it. Um, yeah, and I, I drifted that for probably, drifted and dailyed that for about two years. And yeah, it, 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 I learned a lot in that car and I met a lot of cool people in that car. And yeah, it was, it was really rad. Um, I think there's actually a question in here, what drift cars have I had? So cars that I've actually taken to the track or that I've done drifting in, I had a, yes, yeah, so the 20 valve K70. I had after that the, a green A86. It had a like a forged carb 16 valve in it. Um, when I owned that as well, I had an S14. It was like SR20. 
uh, 2871R, cams, Power FC, all that kind of stuff. I did a little bit of drifting in that. Um, what did I have after that? I think after that I had a... Might have got the white A86. Uh, so my, I had a Torreno coupe. Uh, and then I think while I owned that, I built a RA65 as well. It was like a GT Sports one. It was pretty cool. Uh, I feel like I should do a video that actually just goes over every single car that I've owned. But anyway, so I had this RA65, I manual converted it, put a weldy in it, put coilovers in it, took it to the track a few times. Uh, after that, I got the... Oh yeah, then I think I got the JZX90 after that. And then my Marone A86, which I have at the moment. So however many that is, I don't know, like six or so. Uh, but I've had lots of like fun little dailies in between that as well. Um, I'll fully make a video for that because that'll actually be like entertaining. I can like reminisce all the cool stuff that I've owned and sold and got rid of and crashed and blown motors up and parted out. So yes, we'll get to that. That'll be fun. Where's your fuel flap? It's not a Commodore. <laughs> I took the fuel flap off my car before morning session last week to go get the some paint cans made up to color match it. And then I just haven't got around to putting it back on. So yes. Uh, if anyone's wondering, it is a 85 Corolla, I think it's a red metallic, can't remember the colour code, maybe 3H1 or something like that, if anyone wants to steal my colour code. Uh, have I seen any S12s before? Uh, not in real life. Um, they do get around though. I think Fellas Network have one at the moment that they like build in and go drifting. Um, yeah, I don't think I've actually seen one in real life. I loved them for ages, like the Coupe ones, with like pop-up headlights. They pretty much just look like a poor man's A86 Torino Coupe. Um, but other than that, no, I have not seen one in real life. Favourite car to date? Um, that's a hard one. I did really love my JZX90 as much as it sucked parting that out. Um, yeah, that was a super fun car. Um, actually, probably my... Yeah, I'd say my green A86 with the Carb 4A in it. Uh, I just had so much fun in that car, like... Did so many track days and it was, yeah, it was amazing. I, I loved that car a lot. Um, but, you know, you can't hold on to them forever. And yeah, I blew up the motor and then I parted it out and put everything else into my um, Torino shell. So, yeah. Can you send me a shirt and invoice it to Cody Barton? Probably not. <laughs> um, Oh yeah, so before Deathclick you had another brand slash team. What made you change to Deathclick and pursue Deathclick as a business opportunity instead? Also, if Deathclick isn't your day job, what is? Um, so before Deathclick we had this little group with a, a few of my friends. It was uh, like Ryan Carlson from Sunshine Coast, uh, Jake Holt from Wagga Wagga, and Willie G from Wagga. So you've seen Willie in my videos. Um, I think Jake's briefly appeared in something. I see him like real occasionally at like events. Uh, he lives in Sydney now. Um, it was called Super Fun Happy Sliders and like, yeah, when we were probably like 18, 19, we were just talking smack on 886 Driving Club and yeah, remember forums? <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, we used to talk smack in the off topic there and we just made this little like drift group and we had like a blog, like everyone had a blog like seven years ago. Um, and then, it, I don't know, it kind of just fizzled out like we made a little bit of merchandise, like stickers and stuff like that and then, you know, our groups go with like Where's the money meant to go? And is it just like whoever put the cash in to make it gets it back and that type of stuff. So I it kind of just fizzled out and I, I was just, you know, decided on doing Death Click instead, which I think there's a question why I started Death Click. Um, so I'll get to that in a minute. Um, I do not do Death Click full time. I wish I could, um, but I do not. I actually have a job. I work for a gambling company um, on course. So I pretty much work from Mwollomba, oh yeah, I should probably add in where I live. I live uh, like Lennox Head, which is about 10 kilometers south of Byron Bay in New South Wales. Um, so anyway, I work from Mwollomba, probably all the way down to say Coffs Harbour. So that's like, you know, New South Wales border to Coffs Harbour. Um, and then anywhere inland, like, you know, they send me all over the place. So um, it's just casual work, like I don't, I'm not on like a salary or anything like that, so I only work like, you know, like two, three days a week type deal on average. And then, yeah, I, I do screen printing for other people. I mentioned that in another video, uh, which, you know, pays for like my rent and some bills and stuff like that. It's not crazy. 
Um, and then I fit in doing death click stuff in between that. So like, you know, printing all the shirts, making stickers, doing photos, making content, like all that kind of stuff. So yes, I wish I could do the death click full time, but I do not sell enough things to be able to do that. Uh, maybe one day I could, but until then, I'm stuck having a job like a normal person. Why are you so shit at PUBG? Um, I don't video game much. I've spent the last like 10 years just like doing car stuff. So yeah, that is why I suck at PUBG. Um, okay, yeah, so in the, the thousand subs video, Grim, in the thousand subs video, I, you know, I showed that I like screen print and I do all that kind of stuff. Um, they wanted someone asked about my printing setup. Uh, pretty much I have like an eBay four color four station carousel. I have an AdTech tunnel dryer and then just like an eBay flash dryer as well. Um, if you don't know what any of this stuff is, Google it or just watch a how to screen printing video. Um, I've been screen printing for about three years now. I started screen printing not long after I started DeathClick. Um, I was using a supplier in Western Australia and he was pretty slow getting reprints and stuff done. So. I was like, stuff this, I'm gonna learn how to do it myself. And then, now that I do it myself and print for other people, I fully get why he was heaps slack on it. Just a lot of effort to do small run reprints and that type of thing, and fit in having a life. So, <laughs> yeah, joke's on me there. Learn the hard way. But, anyway, no, I, I love screen printing, it's fun. Uh, I literally printed shirts before this, and then probably I will after this. Um, yes, you're so annoying, Grim. So annoying. Oh, there was also a question. How much did I pay for Grim? I paid $3,800 for Grim. He's adorable. A car you've owned but wish you never sold. Um, I don't think I have any that I wish I never sold. Unless maybe, maybe my S14. Because at the moment I really want an S chassis. And it was like the perfect S chassis. Like Tomei Poncams, 2871R, uh, Power FC, Dejetro and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it had like a diff, adjustable arms everywhere. It was... Pretty much like a setup as a Sylvia could be. Um, and it was black, it was rad. Probably kind of regret selling that one. Everything else I've kind of like rebuilt again. Like all my Corollas, like I've got another Corolla at the moment that's set up exactly the same as how all my other ones are, which is how I love them. So yeah, it's kind of whatever. I don't really care about that. But yeah, probably the Sylvia uh, is something I regret getting rid of. Who inspired you the most to start doing YouTube? Um, I feel like anyone that have started a channel this year would probably say, or a car related channel this year would probably say Adam LZ or TJ Hunt. Um, I know everyone hates on those guys, but honestly, if, if you watch what they're doing and, and the amount of pressure that's involved in trying to release content every day, you kind of have to release some douchey shit. That's pretty much how it works. Um, but I, I feel like what their video, their videos are great. Like, you know, it's just dudes hanging out, working in their own shops, hanging out with friends and building cars and people watch it and they get paid to do that and they have like these brands and stuff like that like it's the coolest thing ever like that is so rad like if I could get my life to that level I would be the happiest person in the world uh, I'm sure I'll, if, if I got there there'd probably be something else and I'd be like oh this isn't actually great but hey from the outside looking in it looks amazing and those dudes do it really well and they've been doing it for a while now um, next where do you see your channel in five years? Um, hopefully still going. Uh, maybe more regular uploads. Um, you know, I've been doing it for 11 months. I think I'm up to like 33 videos. So the initial idea was to do like weekly videos. Um, but even that gets pretty difficult sometimes. So I, I don't know if I make it more money and I can afford to do more content. That's I'd love to be doing that. Um, yeah, I guess in five years it'd be cool if it was full time. But hey, you know, that's up to you guys how much you love me. Uh, what has been your favorite travel destination and why? Uh, I've pretty much only traveled to Japan, so I guess Japan, because it's awesome. Uh, I've been three times, uh, and yeah, I would love to go back again. If money was unlimited, what would your dream drift build? I don't actually know. I feel like... I'd have to build heaps of different cars because there's no, no one car that satisfies like all of my needs. Like obviously I'd build Corollas, I'd build a Sylvia, I'd build, you know, JZX. and X. Um, I don't know. I don't know. 
And then I feel like if I had enough money, I wouldn't want to keep just doing drift cars. Like I, I love drag racing. Um, I would love to be able to afford to build a cool drag racing car. So yeah, I, I don't have one specific dream car, but you know, obviously build some street cars, some extreme sort of drift cars and anything in between. I, I, I would not be able to choose on one. <laughs> when will you propose to Emily? Um, I should do that really soon. She is literally <laughs> the best thing that has ever happened to me um she's amazing and i would honestly love to wife that so maybe soon who knows we'll see what happens <laughs> okay i almost forgot one question which <laughs> jack sent me um what is a good entry level drift car for someone with little to no experience um honestly there's no one size fits all um, I love Corollas. I think they're still at a, at a reasonable sort of price where you could get one. They're entry level and affordable. Um, but then also parts are getting harder to find. It's getting super annoying to start mo keep modifying them. Um, and then they're all getting really rusty. So that kind of sucks. Um, Sylvia's, honestly, they drive amazing. You can buy so many off the shelf parts. Um, they're, I'd probably say they're the best inexperienced entry level car. Um, there's so much information on the internet, how to modify them, what to do, everything like that. Um, I'd, I'd probably say something like that would probably be your best bet, um, but they're also starting to get a little bit pricey. So like I, I feel drifting nowadays, you really, if, unless you know people, you kind of really need to spend say seven, eight grand on something um, to jump in and go comfortably drifting with. So yeah, I'd probably say Sylvia, that, that'd be my pick of the bunch. Um, just be prepared to pay a little bit and yeah, try and have some trouble free motoring. Oh yeah. Okay. So I kind of touched on this previously, but why did you start death click um so i started death click in i think my first release was like august 2015 off the top of my head um before that it actually been like you know months in the process you can't just release things out of the blue um it, it had been a little bit of work behind the scenes uh, i'd say probably a little bit earlier that year it kind of started like so I'd been working at a bank for about six years um, and then I just finally got to this point I was like 22 and I'm like this is not what I want to do with my life um, so I literally just went into work one day and I was like I'll see you guys like this has been fun gave my two weeks did my two weeks um, my girlfriend at the time and I broke up as well um, about the exact same time that happened so there was lots of things in my life that were changing like we were living in a house together I moved back in with my mom and my brothers um, and then, yeah, I was pretty much just not working and going skateboarding every day and I don't know, I was, still, I was pretty much, I was trying to work out what I wanted to do with my life, what I wanted to, like where I wanted to be. Uh, I don't know, it was just like one of them like turning points in your life and you really have to try and like work out what you want to do. Um, and then one day I was literally just like, I'd go skateboarding, I'd watch like skateboarding videos and all this kind of stuff and the Bones Brigade video came out. Um, it was this cool like documentary on like you know how the brand started and the history of it and why they did it how they did it and you know the people involved in it and then it was also like you know the people involved in it reflected on how it affected their lives and you know how it got to them to be where they are like you know that was like Tony Hawk, Rodney Mullen like all, all the big names were in this team um, and then I don't know, watching that, it just really inspired me to be like, you can create this brand and image and you can have like thousands of people involved like all over the world that wear your stuff and support it. And you can change so many lives and people around you and it all sounds really cliche. And, but it feels like, you know, you, you get this sense of doing a lot more than just like, it's, it involves a lot more than just you. You can, you can create something and, and be something. And I don't know, I, I watched it and I was like, fucking yes that is some direction i need to do something like you know there's like drifting brands but they're all super cringy like you have like cars on t-shirts like hard tuned and shit like that like people wear like skyline t-shirts and i'm like i want a brand that people can wear you can walk down the street you can see someone else wearing it and be like boom that guy likes cars and fashion um so that's that's literally what i tried to create and and you know i, I know people that have met through just walking down the street or being in like the city or something like that and wearing a death click shirt and then they're like friends because like well you know pecky you must be into cars all this kind of stuff and that's insane so that's like what i'm getting at with like it's more than just me 
Um, obviously, like the brand is me. Like I do mostly everything. Um, I've like friends help out and stuff like that. But it's me. But I don't feel like it's me. Like it's not my name. It's a lot more than just me. It's it's you guys and I don't know. It's very hard to put into words how I feel about it. Um, but yeah, so that's literally been like three years now and I honestly can't imagine my life without it. Like, even if it stops making money, I'm probably going to still print t-shirts and, you know, try and hock them on the internet, go to events, set up and sell stuff. Like, I don't know, it's literally my life. So, as I said, I was looking for something that I, I needed some direction. I needed something to inspire me every day and... Yeah, I feel very lucky that I started a clothing brand and then that literally has just been like it. I've just nailed it first try. But, you know, a lot of people don't get that. Like you can start something and then it fizzled out after a few months or six months or 12 months or something like that. Um, but, you know, you just need to know that if you love it and it's something that you want to do, keep doing it. Work your ass off at it. Like obviously there's been lots of times where death click gone backwards and we're not making any money. Like you, you got to work around it and, you know, see what works for you. Um, I feel like I got really off track there, but anyway, yes. Do you eat ass? Yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite position to rail dudes or whatever? <laughs> um, I don't know, maybe like modified missionaries. So I got like some legs up, pushing them back. I can see some dick and shaft, some balls swapping around. They could be jerking themselves off while I'm in there. I don't know if I could put this in, but anyway, yeah, if I was railing dudes, that was what I'd be doing. Ever smoke a beer? No, I don't drink, smoke, do drugs, anything like that. Um, I'm what the, I've been straight edge for probably about 12 years now. Uh, I think I claimed in like 2000 when I was like 14, um, and I have not sold out. So, yeah. I have straight edge tattoos. I'm down for life. Uh, if you don't know what straight edge is, it's pretty much like a... No, fuck it, you can just Google it. Google straight edge. And if you judge me based on that, cool, whatever. So unsubscribe to the channel. How do I find inner happiness? Um, that, that's a moving goalpost. You will never find one thing that makes you happy. Uh, it'll make you happy for a while, and then after a while, you'll get sick of that. And then you'll have to find new things that make you happy. Um, that's how life works. You, your feelings change and how you feel about things change. So you're never going to be truly happy doing the one thing over and over. What is the meaning of life? Um, do cool shit. <laughs> That's it. Do you want babies? Yes, with you, 100%. Um, goals slash things you want to accomplish before you die. Um, I honestly don't know. Just go drifting a lot. Um, obviously have a few kids. I need to, I need to create, you know. Um, I'd love to, at some point before I die, live off death click and YouTube and doing this cool stuff so, you know, that that could be my life. Um, I don't care if it lasts for 12 months, five years, whatever, as long as at some point in my life, I don't have to have a job where I work for someone else. I just get to do my own shit and be able to live off that. That it would be insane. Um, so that's, yeah, just something I want to accomplish. But, we'll see what happens. <sighs> my coffee's so cold now. Um, oh yeah, how I like my coffee. Uh, soy cap, one sugar. How big is your donger? Um, man, I, I'd say it's above average, but not impressive. Does that give... Okay, I'm going with that. That's a good answer. Um, yeah, so with that, I think I'm pretty much out of questions. Uh, I, I feel like I covered a lot here, like we've covered like YouTube, drifting, me personally, um, how I got to be where I am. Um, yeah, so I feel like this has been pretty informative. If you guys come up with any more questions, just hit me in the comments, I'll try and reply. Um, YouTube doesn't actually give me notifications on comments anymore, so I'm not sure why, but I'll try and check as, like, as often as I can within like the next week or so. Um, yeah, other than that, I'm going to wrap up this video. It's literally been just half an hour of me talking to a camera in a room by myself. Well, actually, Grim's here, but he's just sleeping now, so that's not as fun. Um, anyway, I'm going to go finish my coffee. And I'm going to edit this video. Make sure you check out the merchandise. Um, you've obviously seen from this video, if you got to this far, how much I love it and want to spend my life doing it. So, if you know, if you can help me out, cool. If not, 
like the video, I don't care. Uh, anyway, subscribe to the channel. Like I said, we cracked 1500, that's crazy. We only hit a thousand two months ago, so we've done, you know, 500 subs in the last two months, which is insane. Uh, so hopefully we can keep that rolling. Um, I'll probably have another car related video. I don't know, maybe on the weekend, maybe tomorrow. It depends how much I get done. I got some, I got some shirts to finish for some customers, but I'll get to it. Um, anyway, thank you for watching. Like the video, hit some comments, do whatever. And thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.